Hey everybody, I haven't done a vlog in it seems like a long time because I just moved, but maybe it hasn't been that long. I've been wanting to talk about this though for a few days. Um, the iodine controversy. So I started taking um, drops of iodine a couple months ago and I don't regret it, but the good news is I, I just did get my thyroid checked. So the whole controversy about iodine causing hypothyroidism, I will be getting back to all of you on that in a future video, or if not, I'll comment below. But um, some things that I have experienced that are a positive result of taking these drops of Lugol 2% um, iodine, which is technically a mixture of iodine and iodide, not just one or the other, which from what I understand, just one or the other can be very bad. Um, I don't get cold feet anymore, and I'm not speaking metaphorically, I'm speaking literally. My feet don't get cold. Also, um, my eyebrows ha have grown in here on the edges. If you look at a video from a few years ago, how I got off the pills, you can see they're like invisible from here over. That was my peak of just hypothyroidism. I'm pretty sure I had it. I slept a whole lot. My basal body temperature was very low. My feet were cold. I had dry skin on my lower extremities. Like my legs were always kind of like dry and ashy. Not extremely, but. Um, and so now, yes, my eyebrows have grown in. My feet are nice and warm and toasty all the time. Also, I tolerate cold and heat better. So, for example, when I go to sleep at night, I don't just automatically get freezing even if it's 78 degrees in the house. I actually could just sleep with a sheet. And um, when it's really, really hot outside, it doesn't bother me as much, you know. I can sweat properly, my body can cool properly, and I think those are iodine-related. I have read that an iodine deficiency can prevent you from sweating properly. Now, I also have had really good nails recently, but I don't know if I can attribute that to the iodine or the zinc and selenium that I have been taking, and the huge truckload of eggs that I've been eating. But um, I think it could be related. So just to make, that's, they're not fabulous, but considering I've been a nail biter my whole life and I've never been able to grow fingernails, just wanted to talk to you about that also. Um, when I first started taking the Lugol's iodine, I was taking up to six or seven drops a day, which is I do not recommend that anyone does because it's so controversial that it'll like tweak your thyroid out. But then I went down to just a few drops a day. I did have an aggravation of acne. And so um, now I'm just taking one drop a day, a 2% solution. And because I did learn that it can actually aggravate acne. But part of the controversy and part of the theory that I wanted to talk to you about was why it aggravates acne. And I don't know if you've ever heard of something called fluoroderma, <clears throat> but you're not going to probably hear about it at your doctor. It's irritated skin from fluoride toxicity and if any of you are like me you're probably full of fluoride in your bones because of the water that has been fluoridated the toothpaste that your parents probably had you brush your teeth with your whole life if you've ever taken a fluoridated medication um, many many years ago I took Zoloft and had to wean myself off of that and if you want to know more about that check out my video how I got off the pills but um that is a fluoride-based medication, and a lot of antidepressants are, by the way. So what it does is it gets in your bones, um, but it also can displace other um, halogens, fluoride, bromine, chlorine, and I'm totally blinking. Chlorine, fluoride, bromine, and iodine stuff are halogens, and so because they're similar and they're all in that same little row row at the end of the periodic table, um, they can displace, they, they, you know, like dissolves like some chemistry, so they can kind of compete with each other. Uh, so fluoride, you know, I believe as being like forced out of my tissues because iodine is coming in and my body's like, oh, this is what's supposed to be here. Good. Kick out this other, some, you know, synthetic second rate crap. I've got iodine now, and, and literally it just aggravates your acne. Uh, but I'm still just going to keep taking it because I want to detoxify the fluoride. 
so, and I've been eating grain-free, and I feel great in a million other ways, so I'm just like, whatever. And part of my theory with this whole um, iodine controversy is part of this new study that is saying that when you take too much iodine that it causes hypothyroidism. Now, I'm skeptical of this study, and I really, if you know the link to the actual study, then please email it to me or post it, like, you know, send it to me um, through YouTube because I want to read the actual study and I haven't actually bothered to read it before making this video. But I have this theory that what they're testing in these subjects is their, um, their T3, T4, possibly their thyroid stimulating hormone, and they're judging by that. Typically, when you get a thyroid panel, they'll test your T3 and your T4, and if you're lucky, they'll test your TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone. And a high TSH is considered a sign of hypo or low thyroid, and a low T3, T4 is considered a sign of hypothyroidism. And so I'm just wondering, you know, if perhaps which of those tests they're using to diagnose. Most likely, it's going to be the T3, T4, because that's what, um, my computer's getting hot, that is what doctors just most commonly use. They don't usually use your thyroid stimulating hormone. So my theory is that, you know, if you take this iodine and you just place these other halogens in your body, um, then iodine becomes, starts to get stored in your tissues. There's one test that you can actually, you know, put some on your skin, and if it absorbs in a certain amount of time, then you can say you are or aren't deficient. You can call it the, you can Google it, it's the iodine patch test, or do better and start page it, because Google follows everything you do. And um, then, of course, there's another theory that if you're taking enough iodine that you should leave a yellow stain when you put your finger on a piece of paper. I think that's a little bit extreme, but then again, I was a pretty much hyperthyroid state. Now, I did have a blood test um, a few years ago back when my eyebrows were so thin and my feet were so cold, and it actually said that I was normal. I was in the normal range of T3 and T4. But the TSH was just below what would have caused it to be abnormally high. And if you have a high thyroid stimulating hormone, then that's a sign that's coming from your brain, that it's working really hard sending extra hormone to your thyroid to get it to stimulate, to get it to work. Why does your brain have to overcompensate like that? Well, it could be because you're drinking a bunch of fluoride um, or chlorine in your water or getting bromines from your pastries, which if you're like me, you're going to go gluten-free anyway because it's GMO and they didn't separate the wheat from the tares. But you can look at my grain-free uh, playlist to find out more about that if you want to help your thyroid. But anyways, um, so I have this theory that they're testing these people that have been taking iodine and they have a lower T3, T4, and so they're not looking at their overall physical well-being, like are their eyebrows falling out, are they losing their hair, or do they have dry skin and cold feet, are they sleeping all the time, I don't know. So if you have access to this study, then please send it to me because I would just really love to read that and do an update on that. But I personally feel great. I don't know if you notice how much body my hair has, but that's also a sign that my thyroid is working more efficiently. My hair is just like fluffy and wavy and it doesn't lay flat anymore. Um, and so... Yeah, I'm going with it, and I just wanted to talk to you about that. And there was something else that I wanted to mention. Oh, and about the fluoride, and I, to get it out of your bones, I really don't think that iodine is going to do that, but I do think there's a connection between boron, um, and I don't mean your bones, as in you personally. I just mean the hypothetical you of the person that I'm talking to who's not taking health advice from me that person. But anyways, um, iodine also, you know, it can be stored in your breast tissue, and, um, you know, Dr. Mercola is coming out with a lot of articles about how that this iodine deficiency can be related to breast cancer. And when you look, you know, in, conf in conflict with this new study that's saying iodine's bad, don't take iodine, blah, 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 in conflict with that is, you know, of course, the syndrome of the Asian women that don't get breast cancer, then their men don't get as much prostate cancer, and then there's one other type of cancer. And they consume up to like 30 milligrams of iodine a day. 
our RDA is like 125 micrograms. A microgram is one one thousandth of a milligram. So um, they're consuming a ton of iodine. The Lugol's 2% potassium iodine slash iodides that I have been taking, I you know, you can look online and it will tell you how much one drop equals, but I think it's a couple milligrams or something like that. I don't, I don't remember. Don't quote me on it. And I'm not your doctor anyway, so don't take my advice. I'm just simply talking about the controversy, but, you know, it is interesting that these women, they're consuming sea vegetables. They're still consuming soy, by the way, which is an estrogenic food that supposedly is really bad for breast cancer and female hormones. But for some reason, the soy isn't being overwhelmed by the iodine. You know that miso soup, seaweed, and tofu. Well, maybe the seaweed is more beneficial than the harm that the tofu is doing, or maybe, you know, soy isn't that bad if it's non-GMO. Um, don't tell anyone from the Weston A. Price Foundation that I just said that, because they will want to shoot me. Uh, but actually, on a side note, soy, of course, if it's non-GMO, because GMO is a complete abomination, um, soy has been shown in some tests to actually break down the bisphenol A that may be in your blood. So whereas bisphenol A makes estrogen stay in your blood and can increase the risk of breast cancer, in my opinion, soy can actually counteract that. Somehow the genistein isoflavones, the estrogenic compounds in soy, probably because back to chemistry, like dissolves like, and your body would prefer a natural substance and it's gonna know how to handle a natural substance more than a synthetic plastic that you accidentally consumed because your Chinese food was, you know, in a plastic container and didn't have enough seaweed in it. So anyways, I hope you're having a wonderful day, and as far as the iodine controversy, I'm sticking with it for now. I will let you know what happens with my thyroid test. Hopefully my TSH will be lower, my T3, T4 will be within normal range. Um, but if it is low, then I still don't really know that I should go by that because all of the hypothyroid symptoms that I had have been decreasing. And I, I consider that a, a gift from taking the iodine and stopping the grains. So look up my truly gluten-free playlist and uh, make your own health decisions. Okay, good night.